my brother was working at the test site up there at Rocketdyne, and he got me started. He said it was a good job and making good money. I started at uh, Coco 4, which was the space shuttle, uh, the main uh, injector testing. You'd have to go up and see it. I mean, but you had to go up and see it the way we saw it, you know, back in the 70s. It's how you, they made you feel like you were really doing something for the United States. I had a friend who worked up there on the SNAP program, and it was a small reactor that was going out in space. They were hiring, and it was a great job, great benefits, the highest pay in town. And all I knew was how proud I was that I'm working for the government, and I was proud that I was accepted and I was chosen. There was a constant venting going on from, because there was like, you know, six or seven firing test stands up there. I don't know where, constantly. Every day we were up there. I don't care. I'd see clouds move around and go from test site to test site, and, you know, different colors and a lot of the stuff I didn't know what it was. A lot of stuff you could taste it and feel it and, you know, it was just, I guess it was part of the job. It, it had gotten slow. So they sent about 20 of us, 20 or 30 of us, over to uh, AI, it's Atomics International, where they have the breeder reactor. And they gave us a badge that had like a stripe, a stripe on it. It monitored supposedly some type of exposure. You know, they really didn't let us know a lot. Anyway, whatever it was, I was there, I was maybe there about three or four months. You should only have to get one badge, they told us, while well, you're going to be here for three or four months. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the week is black. No matter how many badges we got, they're always bad. And they're always turning dark real quick. So as far as what I was exposed to, I have no idea. Before my clearance came, I had to work in the basement, and that's where they did the, that's where they had the reactor. And that's where all the workers worked, and they all had on white outfits and hats and booties and and total, uh, cover, totally covered up. They were behind closed doors, but I ran the coffee pot, and that's where my desk was. And, and the nuclear workers would come in and come out, and come in and come out and get their coffee, and we'd visit and have lunch. I, I was never given any safety training. I was never given a radiation badge, even though I worked around radiation workers, and I worked at the SRE, which is, was the sodium reactor experiment. liquid oxygen. They called it LOX clean. Everything had to be LOX clean. So the trichloroethylene was the only one that that's all they would use. And we had 50 gallon drums of this stuff everywhere. It was everywhere. You could go to any test site, you could go to any storage area and get a stainless steel five gallon bucket of it and it was constantly, it was throughout the whole test site. There was one foot square, uh, one foot square you know, cement drains that went to uh, uh, where they went, I have no idea, but the hydraulic oil and the TEC, everything would go down there and, you know, all the trichlor and that's where it was supposed to, we'd get a little broom and sweep it down there. Of course, we were all, you know, we're all confined in this room and there's like 250 gallons of this stuff floating around plus mixed with hydraulic oil. I didn't, you know, and uh, there was no breathing apparatus for us. Like I say, it was face shield, rubber gloves, and coveralls. What always stuck out in my mind was the signs all over said, do not drink this reclaimed water system. Okay? And the reclaimed water system fed all the restrooms, all the hand wash sinks, all the toilets, all the urinals, and they had signs everywhere that said, do not drink reclaimed water system. We had, we had drinking water, it was delivered, and also in the bathroom they said, 
there were signs that said non-potable water. I didn't know what non-potable water was. I don't think I don't think I drank it, but I did use it to brush my teeth. And I don't know. I, let's say 1960 to 1971, 1994, I was diagnosed with cancer. And my doctor, two of my doctors said, well, where did you work? They said, this is an occupational cancer. And, you know, first I thought it was something I did. How in the world did I get cancer? I spent my whole life at the gym and taking vitamins and in natural foods. That was the whole focus of my life was staying healthy and keeping my family healthy. And here I am getting bladder cancer. So my my uh, oncologist told me that he treated all kinds of people from Rockadine, Santa Susana. So many people that actually some of the doctors in the valley wrote them letters and said, what are you doing to your employees? We're seeing way too many cancers. And it wasn't just in the scientists. It was in the secretaries. It was in the janitors who did the sweepings. Massive amount of cancers. I did volunteer work at West Hills Hospital, and the head of nursing told me that years ago in the 70s, she, she worked in a ward that had all Rockadine employees, and they all had brain tumors, a whole ward full. And that's what one of the nurses told me. If it was from the same reclaimed water system that we used to walk around and find the polywogs that never turned into frogs that were the size of largemouth bass and two-headed snakes, and John Ott, he'd, he'd catch them, and then he'd skin them, and he'd come in with his cowboy hat, and he'd have a two-headed snake <laughs> around, around the cowboy hat with the rattler and the whole ball of wax, and there's these two heads up there. Like the 50 gallon drums that looked like they had been abandoned for I don't know how long. You know, just there, just dissolved, just rotted away. Just I, who knows what was what. I didn't know what half of those things were. How do you clean up only 2% of something? that you've been contaminating for 50 years with a populace around you of a half a million people. I don't know. So then I filed a lawsuit. I thought, okay, this came from my job. I'll file a lawsuit. So I filed a lawsuit against the government, Department of Energy, Rockwell International, and I had the best lawyers in town and I went into depositions and I was treated like a criminal and it the, the lawyers who did the depositions on behalf of the government and Boeing treated me like they were the Gestapo they, they were absolutely threatening and uh, just here I am I no hair and undergoing chemo and radiation and they treated me like a criminal and I was, I was only seeking justice. So, that was my education to our United States government, okay? They're not by the people and for the people. They're for big business. And God forbid some of these corporations should leave the state and take away revenue. And it was a rude awakening. Here's what happens 25 years later. You want to know what happens 25 years later? Your teeth fall out of your head. That's what happens. And they don't know why I never had a cavity. If I get diagnosed with cancer, then my teeth fall out. I need a minute.